So let me share my screen. Okay, so hopefully now you can both see my screen and uh, hear me. Uh, in which case, uh, hello everybody, and uh, thank you for joining us in the session for the Open Science Lens, uh, a project born uh, under an open air open call and received much attention and enthusiasm by all involved. Uh, the task at hand straight away is to bring information residing in open air data infrastructure within the reach of scientists and general public alike, um, easily accessible and close to their everyday web browsing. So, my name is Joros Papanikos, and uh, I will try to respect the next 30 minutes of your time. Uh, and first, a few quick words about who we are. Uh, I am the CDO at SITE, and my role in Open Science Lens was that of the project manager. Uh, SITE is uh, SME. Uh, it's established in Athens here in Greece uh, uh, since 2007. Uh, we're currently employing over 30 software engineers, and we're active advocates of open science. Uh, we're participating in EOSC and RDA working groups, uh, technically leading the Neanias project, which I would invite everybody to check out. Uh, we are contributing to open air services uh, and uh, uh, we offer uh, a, a wide spectrum of commercial software design and implementation services. We are active in a wide range of domains and business sectors, uh, which I will not go into the details now to save time for what we are here to present and discuss. Uh, so uh, we move on. Uh, and what we uh, we are here to discuss about is open science lens. And as the session uh, is called, it is about exploring open science uh, in the browser. Uh, so we'll see a little bit about uh, what the uh, vision of this is, uh, what we are offering uh, in uh, both uh, uh, aspects that we have chosen: the open science, uh, 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 the open science lens browser extension, and the science page enhancer. Their characteristics, uh, the audience uh, that they're targeting, uh, the current status, some food future plans. Um, we'll, um, we'll see it a little bit in action. Uh, then we'll discuss a little bit about what it, what it feels like building on top of open air data uh, and services. Uh, we'll take a quick uh, glimpse behind the scenes of what, uh, of what uh, we're offering. And uh, we'll go straight away in, straight into it, sorry, some slight issue, uh, into the vision uh, of what we're offering. So uh, what Open Science Lens aims to deliver is a set of instruments that will allow scientists, researchers, and general public uh, to locate and explore information uh, relevant to open science easily while navigating the web. Uh, we started with three targets in mind, uh, and those are to firstly unleash information that is already residing within open air data infrastructure. Uh, to promote open science by bringing the concept and its benefits closer to the, uh, to the public. And uh, also to, uh, if possible, to have a sustainable business perspective over what we're doing. Uh, so the key points to deliver our vision uh, was firstly to uh, reuse uh, uh, the services already available uh, in open science and their APIs. Um, utilize as much as possible portable technology so that we can cover uh, uh, the, the, the major cases uh, that we had in mind. Um, require minimal, uh, minimal investment from potential clients from their perspective into integrating and adopting uh, uh, what, uh, what we're developing. And although uh, we uh, aim to start small, we had uh, in mind also the ability to scale both with respect to the features that we're offering uh, to, the, uh, to the kind of uh, um, data that we can cover and to the audience that we can address. Uh, so, uh, how we approach this vision, uh, we had a dual approach and the, uh, we called it the client based and the server based. Uh, pretty much what the client based uh, is, uh, is that we wanted to target end users directly. Uh, so, we wanted to bring no investment in uh, content providers for any page en enrichment or enhancement or changes that they needed to be doing. But that means that we would require the page visitor to take an initiative and install a user plugin. On the other side, uh, from the server-based approach, uh, we went the other way and we targeted content providers and implicitly uh, the end users. Uh, so in this case, we do require some minimum investment from uh, the page owners, um, optionally uh, some additional markup in their pages. Uh, but uh, this means that we do not require any action from the page visitor, so from the end user, because all the functionality is offered by a JavaScript library that they push directly in their browsers uh, from the server. 
this would create a much richer experience uh, for the visitor. Uh, and it would feel like the page owner uh, has a site embedded feature that is targeting the specific functionality. Uh, all this uh, with the aim to be able to uh, dig up on demand information related to open science artifacts uh, that the user is seeing, uh, whether they're related to research projects, grants, researchers, publications, and so on. In this session, in this presentation, we will primarily focus on the browser extension, although we will touch also on the other perspective. So uh, going into the browser extension, uh, first a little words about the audience. We already said that we're targeting researchers and general public. Uh, the aim here is to facilitate open science information discovery and motivate end users to, uh, into open science. Uh, some facts about the, the, the extension. It is currently available only for Google Chrome. And you can find it in the Chrome store searching for open science lens. It has been uh, available uh, since June 2021. Um, not saying big words, we're currently do not have any open issues. Uh, uh, so I think we can say that we are in stable beta situation right now, although there are uh, things that we want to work on. Uh, so we, ever since it has been released, there has been a steady increase on the user base. Uh, somewhere there between, the, uh, between August, uh, there was a big increase. Um, we are right now at uh, about 420 unique downloads, at least a couple of days ago that these statistics were aggregated, and 402 active users. 9% um, uh, of the people that downloaded the plugin uh, uninstalled it. Uh, but we aim to get them back. Uh, the, um, the user base is spread across around 45 uh, countries, uh, uh, most active of which currently is Mexico and close behind is also Spain. Um, so in a nutshell, what the extension does is that uh, when a user uh, opens the, the page, uh, it will start scanning the page, uh, looking for text, links, and other DOM elements uh, where it can uh, search for DOIs. Um, once those are retrieved and identified, uh, it will uh, get information from the APIs and, uh, uh, and the open air research graph, and it will provide the, the information that it has originally uh, discovered in a slide panel um, uh, listing, but also uh, bring in uh, handles, badges within uh, inside the content of the page and provide drill in capabilities through uh, either of the two, uh, these two uh, interaction hubs. Uh, there's also uh, an opportunity for contextual search. So if you highlight the text on the page, right click uh, on it, you can search open air for it. And some configuration options for the user to be able to uh, adapt uh, the behavior of the extension to his liking. So having said all this, let's see a small demo of what we can have. So firstly, what you would do is that you would uh, need to uh, download the extension. So uh, we will go to the Chrome store not in Greek. And uh, here uh, I can search for open science, uh, open science lens. I have already uh, installed the plugin, uh, so I have the option to remove, but here somebody else will have the option to install it. And once uh, uh, you do that, uh, uh, you can continue uh, your usual browsing, which in my case usually starts from, uh, uh, from uh, the Google search page. Uh, there is already something different here on my page. Uh, there is an icon in the, in the extensions that I have. I can choose to pin or unpin it to be able to see it straight away or not. Uh, so uh, as I'm here, I'm going to search for something. I'm going to search uh, for uh, uh, an article, that uh, data journals survey. Um, and uh, here, uh, there is something different in, the, in what I'm seeing. Uh, firstly, there are says, uh, these very uh, aesthetically pleasing, if I can say so, badges next to some of the links. Uh, and also there is a draw, uh, there is a drawer handle here. Uh, so what happened is that the extension identified that these links are associated with a DOI. Uh, it searched uh, open air uh, for that DOI and it has identified that it can uh, provide me with uh, additional information about it, like uh, who are the creators, uh, how it was funded, uh, related data sets uh, uh, to this, uh, publication, which is also open access, uh, the organizations and so on. Uh, so I can click through the links here and get a better understanding of what I'm looking at. And I can also do the same uh, from this side panel here. Uh, like, for example, I can look up one of the, uh, one of the authors through the OCID ID that, uh, that it has, or through, for example, uh, a Microsoft Academic uh, link that, I, uh, that has been identified. 
or I can find more information about uh, uh, how it was funded. Uh, all these links will direct me to the Open Air Explorer uh, interface uh, where I can get all this information from. Um, also, um, since I'm here, I can, uh, I can choose uh, to modify how the uh, plugin uh, behaves and uh, um, select that I do not want the, uh, the page to be uh, enriched with, uh, with the badges and I only want to see uh, what is coming here in this uh, drawer here. Uh, now, let me set it back uh, because I want the context of the demo to be able to quickly identify uh, what the extension looks for us. Uh, so let's not deprive uh, uh, Wiley there, click and get uh, here. So uh, here we can see a uh, very evidently displayed uh, DOI, which the uh, extension uh, has identified, but also some uh, uh, some DOI references that are hidden in the text, but are available in the links. Uh, so again, we have the information here. Uh, but if I, uh, if I check on the drawer here, I can see that in addition to this one uh, publication, I have uh, more information. And although I can uh, search through it to, uh, pinpoint the one that I'm interested in. Um, what are the other uh, uh, list items? So uh, in the page, we have also some recommendations and those have also been identified and I can get uh, additional information about uh, each one of these. Uh, and uh, they are also available uh, for me here. So let's do another search. Let's do some, let's go somewhere else and go to science direct, for example. And here I can search for research graph, and one of the results here will be uh, this connected research, the potential of PID graph. Uh, I'll go in and again, we can see the same situation. The PID was identified, some information was here, but here in the list, I have an ever bigger list of 17 DOIs. So what happens here is that um, if I start going through the page, there's a section that has references for this uh, publication. And uh, these references, for some of these references, there are also DOIs. Uh, and I can directly get information about them, like, for example, here, uh, number 19, which is about, well, the open air research graph uh, data model. And I can see straight away uh, who are the creators, how it was funded, the organizations, and so on. All the information that we've seen before. But now, we've been primarily looking at publications. So let's look at something different, a different kind of uh, open, uh, open science artifact, like for example, a data set. So let's look for uh, some, some dumps of the research graph itself. Uh, so here there's a page that uh, has available some of the dumps in various uh, format of the research graph that we are also, also using uh, um, uh, under the hood of the uh, of the open air uh, API. And for example, here there is a small explorer uh, dump uh, of the data set. Uh, and here I can see the, who are the creators, again, how it was funded, also related data set to this data set and publications that, have, that are linked to this data set. Uh, so, uh, okay, so after this very quick demonstration, a walkthrough of what the plugin can do for us. Uh, let's jump back to the presentation uh, to uh, see a couple more things uh, and talk a little bit about the science page enhancer. Uh, in this case, as we said, uh, the audience is primarily research infrastructure, content providers, and respectively re repository managers and publishers. And the aim here is to enrich what they're offering. Uh, spark new ideas on API usages uh, that they can also have and motivate them uh, into open science. And a few words about what the Science Space Enhancer does is if you wanted to uh, put it all in a sentence is to be able to have uh, an embedded open science lens for their users. Uh, so uh, empower the, their users uh, to see what we just saw without them being needed to see the extension. And that would be the baseline of what uh, we are offering for them. Because in addition to that, they could also enhance the web content uh, that they're offering with inline open uh, science information and facts. Uh, they could extend their integration with some custom markup uh, in their page uh, where the content coverage would be expanded, not just to DOIs, but also to other information, other handles, like for example, people, projects, uh, software, research, data and so on and any uh, and any other kind of information that open air uh, graph uh, uh, exposes uh, and we can use 
this is kind of a low code approach where uh, with minimum intervention, you can integrate uh, and utilize other services. Uh, but we're also having progress, uh, a kind of a no code approach where with pattern and uh, configuration based uh, matching, uh, we could identify uh, additional handles without the need for the content provider to come in and alter anything in uh, what they already have. Uh, now, this is currently evolving, and uh, we, uh, uh, we are in communication with some content providers to streamline the integration process, and uh, hopefully uh, soon we'll have more to say and display about this, perhaps in the next, next Open Science Fair. Uh, so a little uh, glimpse behind the scenes. Uh, we've already seen that the top two building blocks, which are the browser extension and the science page enhancer, these are our user facing uh, uh, components. Uh, but underneath we have the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Open Science Lens API, which is the gateway into all the functionality that offers and hides uh, and expands on and aggregates and transforms on the kind of information that we can have available from the, directly from this Open Science, from the Open Open Air uh, API and the research path. Um, uh, there's also a, a web application that is available uh, that is primarily for administrative purposes, but also uh, assists in the registration process of the uh, content providers, uh, where they can uh, get their uh, get access to uh, the uh, science page enhancer uh, and uh, to the configuration builder that we have in order to have a one-stop shop, if you want, of how they want uh, their uh, the enhancer to be integrated with their uh, uh, with their page. So. Moving on, uh, uh, a few words about the open air research graph, although there are others also here in, in the fair that can talk about this uh, 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 in more detail than we can, uh, what I can say is that uh, what we got from the research graph is that through the aggregation of the uh, of, uh, of a vast number of uh, um, content providers, pro, uh, funders, projects, publications, research data, and so on, um, and uh, curation, linking, deduplication, and further processing uh, that it takes place in order to produce the research graph, uh, the, uh, the amount of information, the quality of information that is uh, easily uh, uh, accessible uh, to build on top uh, is pretty much what has enabled us to provide uh, the value-adding uh, value uh, service that we are offering now. Um, so, uh, uh, wrapping up with some final notes to leave uh, some time also for any questions that you have. Uh, for the browser extension, I can say that in the immediate plans we have, uh, we have is to make it available for more browsers. Uh, we want to target more persistent identifiers, not just DOIs. Um, expand a little bit on the drilling uh, functionality that we have for, for, for versions, licenses, uh, downloadable links, and so on. So enrich what the user uh, sees and also uh, extend on the navigation capabilities that we offer and include uh, also aggregations and statistics, which uh, on top of uh, information about what you're seeing could also present some information about the context around what you're seeing. Um, for the science page enhancer, we are now aligning the user experience with what the extension currently provides. And we, as we said, we want to simplify and automate, uh, sorry, we want to enhance uh, the configurability and the markup based expression that we're already offering and enhance on the no code integration as I described before. Uh, we also want to simplify uh, the, the central configuration builder in order to provide more um, uh, streamlined uh, um, integration uh, uh, point for the content providers, and also uh, explore a little bit about what kind of connections we could have with open air dashboard and for the repository managers uh, uh, there. So um, now uh, within time, uh, and on behalf of uh, all the people that uh, have worked uh, for the uh, open science lens, uh, I'd like to thank you for uh, being here and listening uh, to uh, what we had to present. Uh, we uh, very much appreciate any feedback that you have, either because you've downloaded and used the plugin or because uh, just this presentation uh, has given some ideas. Uh, so we will be uh, uh, very glad to hear back from you. Uh, Eleni? 
if there are any questions, we'll be very thank happy. You, thank you very much, George. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, I think it's it's really it's really very nice to see how all this knowledge and all these things that have been put together by open air can be really made accessible uh, to people and can be really uh, add uh, can be of help while while working uh, while working online and while browsing to identify open science uh, content and uh, services so uh, maybe yes this is a good idea is there anybody who is joining us today who has used open science lens and are there any questions or any comments or any recommendations for for george Well, what I hear is a lot of potential uh, users, so good. And uh, Steph is writing in the chat that they are the two listening to her. So yes, maybe it's a good idea that you check it out. And I'm sure that uh, George, uh, you you have the emails here. Uh, he will be available to to reply to any comments you you may have or any support you you may need. Although it seems like a really straightforward tool uh, you just uh, you just have it on uh, the, the extension on your browser and then you forget it it is there is that so george yes uh and hopefully uh you uh are reminded you you you're reminded that you have it once you actually uh uh what is when it is actually useful for you to use uh so we've already heard some good feedback from the people that have used it uh also some unexpected feedback from uh domains that i didn't expect uh, uh from life sciences and so on um and it was uh it was very good it was very good i'm we'll very happy to hear more about it uh, a very interesting question uh, in the chat. Any plans to keep track of citation counts? To me, this goes in the direction of alt metrics. And uh, if it can be a tool that can be used to measure effectiveness and impact of, of work. If, if I'm uh, misinterpreting uh, the, the, the question, please, Suni Go, please, uh, if I'm spelling your name correctly, you, you can, you can uh, unmute yourself. Yeah, hi, can you hear me? Ah, yes, yes. hi. Yeah, yes. thanks, George, uh, for the very interesting presentation. I'm very intrigued by the new product. I'm, I, in fact, just um, downloaded the extension and tried uh, on a couple of things. Um, yeah, so, yes, indeed, uh, Elena, thanks for um, yeah, uh, raising uh, the question that I put in the chat. So, um, we, we, we are just uh, also looking at uh, recognition for open science. So I think in terms of uh, tracking uh, open science uh, practices, uh, how much uh, they are practicing and uh, the kind of impact they are making. Uh, yeah, I think it's useful to also uh, perhaps uh, consider some of these questions. Yeah, thanks. Uh Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, so um, at the, at the, at this stage, at least, we want to uh, primarily uh, make sure that we can uh, bring the information as close to the to the public as possible. Although uh, exactly because while you're browsing, uh, you may show interest uh, on um, uh, on some of the information, uh, or you can see if. Uh, um, uh, or you can you could report the user could report that he's missing some additional information uh it could act as a as a tool that it could uh, perhaps uh keep track of uh, uh feedback not just about the application itself but also about the content providers about uh, the, the the quality of the citations and so on uh so it's all uh, it, 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 having something that is as close and as easy to the end user uh, i think just opens up the possibilities of what more you can add and what how more uh how um what else could you do with it so we'd be very happy to uh to uh, uh to work on uh, additional uh, uh things that we could do with this
sorry. There is also a question about feedback you have received until now. And I guess if you have incorporated in, in your development some of the input or feedback you have received until now, and in which direction probably this, this feedback went. Just to tell you that we have two more minutes to go, but as there is the break immediately after this, and so I guess we can we can have two additional minutes if people are interested in discussing and staying here with us. The feedback we had up to now was primarily with respect to the kind of information that they want to have uh, easily available. Uh, so how we present the information, what other kind of information they would like to, to, to see straight away. Uh, and also um, on how easily uh, you could uh, get to an uh, uh, unpayable kind of uh, uh, way of uh, being able to, uh, to retrieve the, the open access uh, uh, data that is actually linked. Uh, so and this is uh, one of the things that we're, uh, that we're working uh, on in order to be able to just um, not just see the information, but also get access to the content more easily. Uh, and uh, another question from Steffi, are there further collaboration, uh, for example, with Open Air? I believe uh, you have mentioned, you have answered this already, George. Yes, um, so we're in constant uh, collaboration with Open Air, uh, the, um, both in order to uh, be able to use also additional services to extend and expand on the kind of information that we're providing, uh, but also uh, in order to uh, integrate more tightly uh, if, uh, if it is helpful with other services of open air, like for example, uh, the, um, uh, the, um, uh, sorry, the, uh, the dashboard. Sorry, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. So the open air dashboard and the repository managers to, uh, uh, to facilitate also uh, them uh, to more easily integrate the science page enhancer, for example, into, uh, into their offerings. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I, I think this was a very good closing question actually. And uh, I would like to, 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 to ask also one which goes very much in this direction, a very personal, if I may, so question to you. You are an SME, uh, you're working, however, in open science solutions and open access solutions. So what would you be your, let's say, personal expectation? How would you like to see this tool evolving in, in the next years? Well, uh, primarily um, uh, the the, the focus that we would like to, uh, to be able to bring is uh, on the science page enhancer uh, because it brings a lot of value to uh, repositories and libraries that it will give them the opportunity to enrich their services and the characteristics that they're offering uh, out of a very rich uh, data infrastructure that is already there for them to, to use. Uh, so uh, although uh, the uh, the extension uh, has the opportunity to reach out to a very wide public. Uh, I think that uh, the enhancer will bring um, a lot of value uh, and also some perhaps also uh, business perspectives um, through, the other, through, uh, through that route. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, George and George. <laughs> Uh, um, if there aren't any other burning questions or comments, uh, I believe that we can close the session here. Um, wishing you a nice uh, lunch break. And uh, we'll meet again uh, at two o'clock Central European summer time for the next uh, plenary session. Thank you very much and see you in next sessions. Bye. Thank you everybody, bye.